guys, welcome back to Chimania Presents Except the Blues. And in this episode, I have Sumed Natu with me. So, without any further ado, let's get in the video. <laughs> Hello Sumit, thank you so much for being in Accept the Blues. It means a lot. Hey Ruchi, I uh, am very pleased to be over here. How's it going? Hi, ah, it's good. How it's, how's it going for you? And I'm so sorry for disturbing you. You're not disturbing me, man. I wanted to do this. I think it's a very cool idea that you have. I guess. So actually, Ayushi told me about you. Like we were discussing something and we got to know about that like, you both started sketch comedy together. I mean, kind of, you taught her or maybe something like that. So what was the story behind that? I was actually, I always loved sketch comedy. I used to watch the Chappelle show. I used to watch Monty Python. And I, I love the idea of like uh, a five minute time in video, just making a point about something. So I always wanted to learn how to write sketches, but uh, I didn't have like a place I, I could formally learn in. So I just, I just started like doing them together. I was working at BuzzFeed then. And she was working at AIB and both of us were at very terrible points in our career because both our organizations hated us. So I just thought that it'll be fun to start doing this by myself. Okay, I'm so sorry, but will you, you please introduce yourself for the audience? I just forgot. No problem. My name is Sumed. I am a, a stand-up comic. I also am a filmmaker and I film food and I film comedy a lot. Do you still film comedy? Like, you still yeah, man, I do it once in a while now. Um, not as much as I'd like to, but uh, I, I basically have like a talk show on Netflix's YouTube channel, which is like a comedy food show. It's called Many Please. Oh, so you love food, by the way, because I saw your YouTube channel and everything. Yeah, I really do. I, uh, I've spent the past three or four years just documenting it, and I really like it. Which is your favorite? Like, do you like cooking or do you like eating? I, I like cooking. Um, I've eaten a lot all over India and abroad, but I genuinely like cooking. So do you remember the first, uh, first or the best food experience of your life? Best food is a, is a little tough because I feel like uh, it's, it's very dependent on mood as well. But I had a very nice time in Kashmir and attended a Kashmiri wedding, which was quite something. I mean, like the food that I ate there was quite extraordinary. I had never eaten anything like that. The first thing I'd cooked was just trying to make butter chicken off the internet, which turned out horrible. I mean, I think I've improved since then. Since you like chicken, you like butter chicken. In general, you like all the food. I mean, I'm not a big fan of it now, but like when I started cooking, I thought it would be like a cool thing to start off with. Um, but it was like such an elaborate dish. I didn't know how to chop an onion then, dude. So it was just like a little tough. I think most people start off Indian cooking with some North Indian dish, which now, in the retrospect, I'm like, there's like a hundred different things I could have tried. I guess it's easy to make North Indian dish because it's like, and everyone loves it, I guess. I just feel like it's more than easy. It's the most, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's the same dish, in like eight different places, same jeera uh, and garam masala and tomatoes and onions and you're done. You just Even I experienced the same thing. And I used to yeah. see my mom cooking, so I was like, let me try. And then I got to know, okay, these are the same ingredients in every dish. Just one or two more, which I guess. But of course, you know more than that. So do you also direct comedy or direct sketches? Yeah, I do. All the ones that I did with Ayushi, I used to direct. Uh, I used to, I'm, like, I, I used to, I had produced like a couple of sketches for AIB back in the day. And I used to direct, I used to head BuzzFeed. So at that point, uh, all the video content, all the sketches that we made, then I used to direct. I mean, I, I really don't want to know, I really don't know this, that I'm just curious, like, what does direction mean? What do you guys do when you direct? Just take a shot. A director is someone who basically uh, tells every single person on set what they need to do. So filmmaking in, in that sense is a very unique uh, artistic field because in most other artistic fields, you are responsible personally for what you do, right? Like if you're a writer, it's just you writing. If you're a painter, it's just you painting. But uh, filmmaking is the probably the only artistic field where what you make depends on every individual person on set. So for example, if you have a different music producer uh, or a music composer, the film is going to sound different. If you have a different writer, it's going to feel different. If you have a different cinematographer, the person who takes 
the shots on camera it's going to look very different so a director's job is to basically kind of like reunite all of them together to get his vision out every actor to place them in the right place I mean, like it's as if I'm a director. What I'll be doing is I'll be first telling my cinematographer that I want this. I want you to shoot the actor just above the chest. I just want like yellow lighting over here. Then I'll tell the actor that I want you to walk from left to right. I'll tell the art director that I want a sofa behind. And you basically, it's your job to construct what happens on screen. Mm, that's the reason they get so much respect. Like everything is on their head. which comes out yeah it's the only way this works because there are so many creative people involved and there's one person who kind of like gets them together under a common idea that's a director's job talking about stand up comedy i literally watched that video of yours jab pe aap munawar wala chuk maar do and this red kurta one that's the that is i think that's the only would you you have i think as as specific as that Yeah, you need to come for a show live if you want me. I am so sorry, but I have seen it. So, like, how no, did no, stand up no. happen? Like, why did you choose stand up? I've been shooting stand up since 2013. I actually like used to shoot at in the Canvas Laugh back in the day. So I've been like recording it for a long time. I always really liked the medium. and i gave it a shot in 2017 and since then i've been i've really liked it i don't want to make a career in it so i don't have like uh i don't have the like i don't get the tension most of the other stand up comics get personally but do it for uh, fun yeah i do it for fun like i don't imagine a career in it you also work with veerdas i have i've toured with him for a year um i was touring with him as a part of his video team he was doing his special in 2015 i was a part of that so you know you don't want to uh, go ahead sorry i'd also shot like one of his specials back which he didn't release but um it was a really nice special back then called battle of the sexes i think it's not released yet but it is i don't think he released it. it it used to be something he used to perform in 2015 but uh, it's a little dated now i think So what do you think like uh, if anyone wants to take a career in sketch comedy or stand up comedy how does he or she should start like what's the first step he or she should do I don't think you can have a career in both very honestly it's uh, <laughs> yeah man like it's a what you see as successful stand up comics are like 15 people who realistically can run their families with the money they earn through this medium uh, and most of them are actually not earning that money through stand up entirely they're owning it as because they're writing shows they're owning it because they're video content producers uh, they work with brands to make a career just as a stand up comic is really tough and you you need to be willing to put in four or five years of work before you can even figure out whether you're good enough to do this you just have to write out a lot of things it is involved yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you just have to be willing to they keep performing without any uh, dividends on it for a very long time and then see if because even i have out. seen lot of people like if if we go into stand up comedy a lot of people who are still on it uh, working on it and have like, audience but they don't have video or something like that which um, i don't know whether that's the case the thing is in in india stand up comedy is directly connected to the internet like you yeah. find most comics online right like you've probably seen a youtube clip of theirs and then that's how you start following them abroad it it doesn't work that way abroad a lot of people get a break because of network television or they get a break because um they go on they 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 say taken up by an agency after being found in clubs but in india it's entirely dependent on the internet and there's a certain uh you have to be liked by people and you, your videos have to do really really well if you want to be successful over here that depends on the video as well like which bit you are putting out so do the quality of video matters because i the videos which i saw generally like fully everything was nice. on the internet i don't think so i think you can upload phone footage and if you're good enough you'll get found discovered quality doesn't matter i mean on the internet not at all i don't think so not on youtube at least youtube you can gen like you can just put up like 
Nokia 1100 footage it'll still work if you're good. <laughs> I thought maybe because that, what I have seen that five thing is like everyone is like on internet with like planning to shoot their video or something like that. The point of YouTube, in my opinion, is that it's an amateur uh, medium. Like it's a place meant for people who can't make videos. It's not meant as a professional platform. If, if you were a professional in the field, you wouldn't want to make videos for YouTube. Uh, the point of YouTube as a medium is that you are terrible at making videos, your hand shakes, but you can still upload something and people can find it if they like it. That's what makes it so nice. So if you don't want to take stand-up comedy as your career, then what are you taking as your career? I'm making money in video, man. Like I'm, I'm making a decent living as a video producer. So I like that. You also produce videos. I didn't know that. Yeah, I do. No, I should, I should have actually had a conversation she told about the sketch comedy part and then I actually in the whole podcast, he kept taking your name. You know, then I asked her, can I get a chance to talk to him? I mean, <laughs> She's being very kind, but we worked a lot together, which is why I think uh, it comes up on and off. Yeah, that is true. So if we talk about like uh, sketches also, then how should a person should write sketch? I think the idea of a sketch is that you're trying to compress a, a joke thought within a span of say two or three minutes. I think sketches work uh, really well if, they, if there's a certain amount of escalation in them of like a joke. That is the last sketch that Ayushi and I had written was something called um, Last Pizza Slice. So you know how when you are just sitting with a friend and when you see a last like a last slice of pizza or a last kebab the first thing you say is no 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 you take you take it yeah so you start off with a relatable premise and then you figure out how you can make it absurd so that's what a joke is basically it's a truth that is distorted so the idea of a sketch is how can you flip a straight idea and make it funny for a certain amount of time something we know but we haven't seen it and then you know, taking out, I guess. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so I can see a lot of books. Do you read as well? Yeah, I try to whenever I have time. Um, and not as much as I used to, but I like reading. I spend, I try to spend a couple of hours every day doing it. What kind of genre of books do you like? I like nonfiction a lot. Uh, I, I think it's like a nice education to have post school and college. Like when you read nonfiction, you're actually reading now because you want to, not because you have to. So I like reading those. Which is your favorite book? I really like this book called uh, The Ballad of Bant Singh, which I've read recently. It's a really, really nice book. What's the first book you read? Do you remember? First book I read was uh, Malgudi School Days by R.K. Narayan. Oh, I, I, know, I know at least that. I don't know the second one you so do you know reading books helps you in some or the other way? I think getting any kind of knowledge helps you, man. Like you just figure out, you figure out more about the world. And like if you're in, if you're in the business of comedy, at least the more knowledge you have about the world, the more you understand how inherently funny it is and uh, just how people can act. And I think that's what you need. Like I, I think the great part about stand up is just that you can use everything you know and make jokes out of it so the more you read the it's it's like having more material like you understand people better what if i ask you how does the comedy of world work what, what, what is going to be your answer it's not a comedy of world like what i'm trying to say is that if you read the headlines today have you read the headlines today what are they hey. I am only <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. But my point is, uh, if you go through the newspaper and you read like, the, if you just glance through the news, you'll just see how much of it is really I funny. I know one of them. Know. I know one of what? them. That Nikhil okay. has cheated on Vishwanathan. Well, that is, that is not the kind of comedy I want to write. But yes, it's funny <laughs> in some way. It's funny for someone. No, I literally read that on the newspaper. I was like, oh, this is also funny. आप आपने पूरा न्यूज़पेपर देख लिया और आपको ये हेडलाइन याद है 
कश्मीर में लोग मर रहे हैं रुचि और आपको ये चीटिंग वाली इंसिडेंट याद है I'm I'm kidding, man. I'm just taking a guess. But I'm just saying that, like, just glancing through a paper, you can figure out a lot of shit that's funny. Yeah, I mean, like political comment, kind of. Because I've heard a lot. मुझे ऐसा लगता है ना whenever I go to some open mic or something, I'm like, when I see new people talking, I'm like, everyone is the same. 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 Everyone is I mean like you I I feel like everyone has five funny minutes inside them. Yeah. You know like these are stories that you tell your friends and they laugh at and that's what you do in an open mic uh, that you should aim to make people laugh with what you know very personally. I think where people go wrong is like they try to be like the famous comics that they that they see online. That's where it goes wrong because you can't be those people. You should try to make people laugh out of things you know. But it goes over that even uh, even if we don't try पर अगर हम लोग किसी के वीडियोस बहुत ज्यादा देखते हैं देन इट्स आई डोंट नो सम और दी अदर वो एक्सेंट मेरे अंदर भी आ जाता है मुझे अच्छा लगता है हां आई नो बट लाइक एट सम पॉइंट यू विल रियलाइज व्हेन यू डू इट दैट पीपल आर कमिंग टू सी यू इफ दे वांट टू सी दैट पर्सन दे विल गो टू सी देयर शो सो यू शुड नॉट मेक पीपल लाफ विद व्हाट यू नो साउंड भी तो होता है लाइक समटाइम्स यू जस्ट ट्राई टू फॉलो द एक्सेंट क्योंकि मेरे साथ कभी कभी होता है ट्राई टू कॉपी मुझे क्या कहना है यार तो वो चेंज हो जाएगा उट Uh, and you have nothing to lose on Zoom. You're just making a fool out of yourself. Yeah. You will never meet again, so it's fine. <laughs> But Zoom doesn't even show that, na, that you, you legit, you people are laughing, or even people laughing. I don't know. I don't get it sometimes. But you know, the first, like the first few times you do it, honestly, like the reason why you do it is not to make people laugh; it's just to yeah. be comfortable on stage. So. Just do it. Like I'm saying that the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Even if you're not getting the reactions you want. But the motivation comes at the end when it happens sometimes. Because obviously, start when it's out there. I think you know, I. The, the the great or the sad part about this medium, actually, the good and the bad part about stand up in general, is that like your uh, people's reaction to what you're saying is instant, isn't yeah. instantaneous. Like. If you make a video, for example, I need to wait for a day to see whether people have liked it or not. But, or the same with a book or any other uh, format of art. But like with stand up, the instantane it's instantaneous feedback. If you don't get a laugh in the next second, you've done a bad joke. And if you get a laugh, the joke has worked. So you can at least figure out how you're doing. Yeah, it's constant. It's just like you have done. In in case of videos, it doesn't. You literally have to wait. कि क्या पता चल जाएगा नहीं चलेगा. And sometimes, mm. sometimes very random videos works, which जिससे में expectation भी नहीं होती कि यार ये नहीं जाएगा. But some or the other way, the views goes up on that. I'm like, यार इसमें तो कुछ नहीं किया था. And yeah. and, when you, and when you put lot of effort, it just like ठीक है. सही लोग चार पांच लोग देख रहे हैं. But आपको क्या लगता है? Like, does internet is a like good career to take on? Like, if if you have video platforms and brand deals and everything. I think that if you have money at home, I think it's decent. If your parents are willing to sponsor you for about five years, great place to be. You can do whatever you want. But I mean, you need to. You can make a living on the internet if you're if you're shameless. Like you can't, you can't be one of those persons who cares about his image, because it's a it's a it's a field where like you make a video and then it's out of your control the next day. so 
you just have to be willing to be shameless and like put out stuff every day if you're that kind of a person great field to be in but uh, if you're not if you care about what people think about you a lot it's just going to be hell for you but it happens i mean uh, generally in my case it happens is i am not scared with people i don't know i'm like theek hai kya fark padta hai but if if there are people i know maybe my friends or just if, even if i know them i don't know us time mere zyada phatti hai i'm like oh um, well, that's what i was saying no ruchi it's about shamelessness so if you want a career in this you have to be willing to be like fuck you i don't care about what you all think and this is what i'm going to do you all are not my audience and you all are not paying my bills so fuck your thought i'm going to do what i what i can yeah that is something that word but look it's been like pehle to bahut hota tha like when i and i obviously when i started my first jada time hua bhi nahi mujhe but jab bhi i think 6 or 7 months before so jab pehla video dalta obviously your friends and family are the only people who are gonna subscribe to your channel so tab bhi aisa hota tha and now i don't give fuck ki ke mat dekho mat karo but fir bhi in suppose this is suddenly i just i was doing an open mic and there was every, everyone was new and suddenly i saw a person who was from my class mere college se mm. and I, because of that i fucked everything shit i forgot the jokes i'm like ye kya sochega i didn't thought about the 19 other people in the room you know that still happens to me though i get very tense when i see like a family member or like someone who i don't know someone who i know really well inside the crowd but it happens when it's a part of just part of training you have to get used to it So, yeah, worked with a lot of stand-up comedians. So, yeah, a few of them I have. Uh, in the beginning of my career, I did. Oh, now you don't. Not as much now. So, what's your take on podcasts? Like, you, is it something to? I mean, people who listen to it because abroad I know that people listen, but India I don't. I don't think so. It's just that I love, so I do it. No, I think people listen to it. What I would just like to see in podcast is like a stream of thought, like. that you have figured out what you want to get out of this and what you want to achieve out of the episode i think a lot of times they just become like uh conversations that go nowhere like just two comics talking about stuff that really doesn't matter or like it's just okay. three hours long worth of a conversation so i just would like to see a sort of a line of thought when i listen to one that i'm going to learn about this or that i'm going to hear this being discussed Who's your favorite uh, stand-up comedian? Um, in India, I really like this guy called Tarang Hardikar. He's very funny. Yeah, um, he's really, really good. I, I think he's. I really like him because I think he's one of the few guys we have who's got a very unique voice. Um, I really like Shrija and oh, the kind of comedy she does. I love Shrija and talking about really voice. Good. I think she has a big. I mean, what does yeah, voice mean? As a? What does voice mean? Voice of? As a? I mean, you said. Voice as a. Uh, when I say that, I mean like what the, a their artistic style and b what they're trying to talk about. So there's two aspects: is a how you perform and then what you talk about, right? And both of them come together to form your voice. So Tarang has a has a very unique voice in that sense. So does Shri Jai. Yeah, she has. I mean, I know obviously comics are my thing. So from there, I follow. Her. So if 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 you have in your life, you have a comedy, like you have a very you know funny story of your life, and you want to you know make it into a sketch and sketch or maybe a stand up set. How do you put it that way? Because you feel that it's funny, and when I share it to my friends, it's funny. But on stage, it's not funny, I guess. I don't know, man. I don't think you should see it as that first. In the beginning, at least, if you're trying this out, you should just narrate the story like how you tell it to your friends with some context. I think the main difference is when you're telling a story to your friends, they know a lot about your life, right? Yeah. So when you're telling this to people who don't know you, you just need to make them trust you. That's what makes people laugh. So if I'm telling a story to my friends, what I'm telling them is say, "Oh, dude, you know what happened with Aditya? Oh shit, dude, he drank so much two days back, and then we found him in a gutter." So when you're explaining this to say a group of unknown people, they don't know who Aditya is. They don't know what kind of a person he is. So that's the context you need to set. Set. So then how you narrate it is, "Oh, I have this friend called Aditya, and he does this really, really uh, insane thing. Whenever he has two drinks, you find him in a gutter the next day." So that's. 
you you set up like an idea of a person and then you construct a story around the idea of that person that's how it works and oh, you do it in hindi, hindi one of the great parts about writing comedy in hindi is that it's a very story based medium like in it, for the hindi language in general like storytelling is one of the most unique formats of comedy associated with hindi you can really sell emotions out in that language way more than i can in english at least Uh, it just makes you feel to the audience because I love listening to stories, but I don't know how to pretend it, like how to put it in words. What I want. To. It's a matter of practice. If you do it enough, you'll get it. So, what do you think? Like, आजकल लोग not आजकल but many times people get offended with jokes so much. So, what's your take on that? That there are audience who just get gets offended on everything. Like whatever you say, they just get offended, and then the thing comes out. I don't know, man. Like, I feel like I have a slightly different point of view. I think like you're completely allowed to be offended at whatever you want, but I feel like if you're willing to make a joke, you should understand its consequences. Yeah. So, so my point is that if you are making a joke about something that you're sure will offend people, then you should a write it when you are when you have the legal ability to defend it in a court of law, and. Uh, Otherwise, just own it, man. Like, I mean, like, I uh, there's a bunch of comics who got like called out for jokes on cast a few mm-hmm. days back, and I don't think a lot of them like really intended to hurt people. But if you have ended up doing it, you have two choices: either you can just own it and say, "Hey, man, I I don't care about what you feel." or then you can genuinely be sorry and not like make those jokes again so i feel like you just have to choose which side you lie on and what makes you money and which people you can afford to piss off rather so do you think connections and networking is important in your field uh it's very unfortunately uh, important uh, way more than it should be most of the really famous comics you see are like also famous by virtue of the groups they hang out with not just yeah i think them so well to nahi but in lockdown i have seen lot of like everyone started their own youtube channel and like, streaming and podcasts so from there i got to know that everything for a long time mujhe aisa lagne laga tha ki for being a stand up comedy you also want to know lot of many things as in like you just knowing about the world helps you is what i'm saying you know like you are able to convert that into jokes whenever you want that's how it helps do you follow dark comedy i do i like a lot of dark comics do you think dark comedy will work in india and still you know because uh, i think because if someone tells me a dark joke i want to laugh but i can't laugh it's something like that to me I there are dark comics in India. I think yeah. uh, Rahul Pak is really funny. He you should check him out if you haven't. He's, I have. That's pretty good. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, and I want to laugh, but I know sometimes there's something clicks my mind. Oh shit! Because I tell you one thing. So I was having a fight with someone for some normal reason, and uh, he said something to me, and I said, "Ki, ha, ठीक है, but तेरे बाप का क्या जा रहा है?" He's like, "My father is not alive." I'm like, how would I know that? I, I was just. to flying you back yeah but like i mean sorry of fault man you're not supposed to know about it either yeah <laughs> don't like and then how you're bringing that in my topic and i didn't really mean it so it's something like i want to but i can't have the shit what should i do now but you don't need to do dark jokes if you don't feel like it you should make jokes about what you feel is nice there's no compulsion to like write edgy stuff you should just write what makes you happy Maybe that's right. You have time because it's already thirty minutes. I know. I should be pushing. So if you want to wrap, let's wrap right now. Oh, okay, that's I. I got to know that it's already wrap now. So take care and thank you so much. I'm so bad. I'm ending it. So it's no dear, problem. I think great, Ruchi. I I hope your podcast becomes like you take it up more and you do more episodes. I hope so. Did you have fun? Did you like? Yeah, it? I did. I had a lot of fun. I appreciate what you're doing, and I think it's pretty good. Cool. Thank you so much for being here. It really means a lot.
had a beautiful conversation with him. I hope you guys also had fun. If you like the video, please give a fine thumbs up. Also, let me know in the comments what else and who else you want to see on this channel. Till then, subscribe to my channel, press the bell icon, and 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 have a great life.